Hello, I'm Dr. Arthur Brodsky, Assistant Director of Scientific Content at the Cancer Research Institute. And today I'm grateful to be joined by CRI Lloyd Gerald Starr, Dr. Andrea Schiedinger of Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center. Welcome, Dr. Schiedinger. Hello. Hi, Arthur. So uh, your work focuses on kind of one of the central paradigms of cancer immunotherapy, which is that as T cells, you know, are kind of waged in this battle against cancer over a long period of time, uh, they can sometimes become exhausted and dysfunctional. So uh, I was hoping first that maybe you could just provide an overview of what we understand at the moment as far as T cell exhaustion in the context of cancer. Yeah, sure. So when a, when a tumor develops, it develops in a certain tissue and the cancer patient has actually immune cells that are specific for the cancer cell. So the immune cell infiltrate into this progressing tumor and and what we what um, over the last year it became um, clear is that these immune cells can infiltrate into the tumor, they can recognize the cancer cell, but they very, very rapidly lose um, their ability to kill the cancer cells. And so one of the big questions in the field um, is why and how can we prevent that the immune cells that infiltrate and recognize the cancer cells lose their effective function. Um, one of the key mechanisms that um, over the last years um, was identified was the fact that the immune cells um, constantly get um, stimulated with specific antigens. These are the specific structures on the cancer cells that the T cells encounter. And through this chronic um, antigen stimulation and antigen encounter, the T cells get over time really exhausted. They um, just lose their um, effect of function over time. And that ultimately allows the tumor to progress. And ultimately, if we don't do um, immunotherapeutic interventions um, takes over and kills patients. You know, it's been great that we have been able to make this progress of, of recognizing this exhaustion. And in some patients, the checkpoint immunotherapies can kind of work to overcome this exhaustion. But, you know, and unfortunately, in most cases, and in most patients, this doesn't work. Um, because there's still a lot we don't understand about it. And so your search for answers took you in an interesting direction uh, to type 1 diabetes, which is an autoimmune disease where someone's T cells attack the cells in their pancreas that produce uh, insulin. So, uh, you know, at first glance, cancer and diabetes don't really seem to have anything in common. So why did you, why did you decide to pursue this avenue? So our research on type 1 diabetes started actually a few years ago, where we were really thinking hard about ways to reprogram T cells um, in, in tumors. And because we knew that one of the drivers that pushes T cells into this exhaustion, this dysfunctional state is actually this repeated and persistent encounter with tumor antigen, we asked the question, how can you maintain T cells functional and not undergo exhaustion when they are in an environment where they continuously see antigen? And for that, we actually tried to look at other areas um, where T cells can maintain effective function, continue to kill specific target cells, and do not become exhausted despite the fact that they repeatedly see antigen on tissue. And that is an autoimmune T cell. An autoimmune T cell is an immune cell in autoimmune patients that go to a specific organ recognize their specific antigen on normal cells, get repeatedly stimulated with this normal um, cell. But in that case, you have the opposite problem. The T cell does not get exhausted and just continues to mediate effective function and kill the target cell. So we as two immunologists thought, hmm, maybe we need to use the autoimmune cell as the role model how we should reprogram T cells for cancer immunotherapy. So we started looking in the literature and asked the question, how are these autoimmune T cells that never lose effective function and presumably never become exhausted, how do they maintain their effective function? And we realized that there was not really a lot known. And so with help from the CRI, we really took on this project and utilized a clinically relevant mouse model um, of type 1 diabetes uh, where we could track over weeks in this model how these autoimmune T cells emerge and how are they programmed and how do they um, infiltrate into the pancreas and never lose effective function. That's fascinating. You know, obviously diabetes is a bad thing, but it's, it's interesting that 
you know, from the T cells perspective, they don't, they don't know what they're attacking, whether it's a pancreas cell, whether it's a cell infected by a virus, whether it's a cancer cell. Um, so, so you learning how it can kill, kill a, a, in this situation, a pancreas cell. And then, as you mentioned, stay persistent over time and then, and then figure out how you can use that against cancer is, is just so cool. Um, so, you know, along those lines, what, what have you learned from these studies? Um, and then I guess, what are your next steps as far as, as taking these discoveries and trying to transform them into, into therapies for patients? Yeah. So we actually made a discovery that, um, I would have never thought this, um, would be the mechanism of autoimmune, uh, T cells, um, to mediate, um, affect the function and destroy normal tissue. So what we found actually was that in the pancreatic lymph node, these are very uh, specialized um, lymphoid organs, which is, so to speak, the headquarter where the, where the immune cells first encounter the antigen that drains from the pancreas. And in these um, so-called pancreatic lymph nodes, um, we discovered a very, very specialized um, T cell. Um, we call them autoimmune stem-like T cells which sit in the, in the pancreatic lymph node and constantly generate autoimmune T cells that then leave the pancreatic lymph node and travel to the pancreas and do the killing of the, of the islet cells. And so this very specialized stem-like T cell that really self-renews and constantly replenishes these autoimmune T cells to go to the tissue and do the destruction has never been um, described before. What we found is that it actually takes very, very few of these stem cells um, in order to mediate uh, type 1 diabetes when you transplant them into a new host. Our research has then focused on really trying to identify what are the key proteins that are expressed in order to mediate this effector function to constantly generate autoimmune T cells that then go to the pancreas. And what we identified were really a handful of key protein, so-called transcription factors, that specifically um, transcriptionally program these T cells to be these very unique stem-like T cells. And one of the exciting next questions now for me as a tumor immunologist is, is to say, if I now take these transcription factors and these very specific proteins and I express them the same way in T cells that are recognizing cancer cells, would I then be potentially able to create these super stem cell T cells um, for cancer immunotherapy? Because that is ultimately the goal. And this is where all our efforts right now are being put to really try to engineer these super stem-like T cells for the cancer setting, and then to see whether they similarly can generate constantly um, cancer selling T cells that go to the tumor, to the progressing tumor and do the destruction. That's fascinating. You know, this whole approach too, um, it almost strikes me as figuring out how to work smarter instead of harder. It's not the size of the yeah. T cell army or how many T cells you have, no. but, but having that a few of those super ones that can replenish. Exactly. Um, and this is actually really the fascinating research to realize how few of those stem cells are really required. I mean, we went down to five cells and um, in transplantation studies, these five cells were able to mediate type 1 diabetes in these new hosts. So it's really fascinating. And that's where the excitement now is for the cancer immunotherapy field. Um, so you, as you mentioned, uh, you know, your goal, your ultimate goal is to take these discoveries and what you learn in diabetes and then apply them to cancer. So what are the next steps that you're pursuing in that regard? Ongoing research is now to take these transcription factors, these specific proteins that are expressed in these autoimmune stem-like T cells, and to engineer now T cells um, that we can use for immunotherapy uh, for in, in, in cancer settings. And so we overexpress or delete these specific genes in T cells that are reactive against cancer um, cells. And we test them currently in vivo in preclinical mouse models and um, give uh, immune checkpoint blockade and ask the question whether now by engineering these specific um, very specialized stem-like T cells that are tumor reactive, whether we now can eliminate established solid tumors. That's great to hear. And I hope that work, I hope we're able to see some exciting results from that before too long. Um, so, you know, as I mentioned earlier, 
no one, I mean, even within science, we don't really think of cancer and diabetes as related. It's kind of such an out there concept um, that is, you know, so important because it, it does relate to the fundamental immune biology. Um, but with respect to this, you know, unique approach, did you ever try to get this work funded before? And did you ever think it would get funded? Well, because I believed in, in, in the hypothesis and in this cool idea, of course, I was hoping it would get funded. We really believed in it. If we would figure out how autoimmune T cells are programmed, it would help us to understand how we need to reprogram T cells for cancer immunotherapy. We applied initially for um, a few grants, but unfortunately they got rejected because it was too high risk. Um, and it was really because of the CRI um, Lloyd Old Star program, which specifically funds high risk, high reward projects for tumor immunology. And so with the support of CRI, we were able to conduct this research over the last few years and to identify these stem-like T cells, which we now test for immunotherapy for cancer patients. I mean, it is, it's, it's so important to, you know, we've made a lot of progress in immunotherapy, um, but, you know, really in the last decade, it's, it's been more incremental. You know, there's been a few things with CAR T cells and otherwise, but when it comes to checkpoint immunotherapy, the progress has still kind of been yeah. incremental. So I think it, it really is going to take work like yours, um, you know, with that's not on an immediately obvious path that takes us in a new direction, really provides us those transformative uh, discoveries that then we can use to really boost the curve and improve survival for patients. Yeah, this is this is clearly a project where we were thinking outside of a box. Um, I have been a tumor immunologist for 20 years, and I would have never thought that my research leads me in the direction where we are trying to understand autoimmune T cells. But with the, with the research that has been conducted and the mechanism what drives T cells in exhaustion, we really thought if we break this um, mystery about why autoimmune T cells um, do not become exhausted, this would potentially be a great um, opportunity for tumor immunology to um, use this, these insights um, for the treatment of cancers. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Schiedinger, for taking the time to speak with me today. It's been fascinating hearing about your Lloyd Gerald star work. Um, this is exactly the kind of high risk, high reward research that we want to support to help bring, bring about more cures for patients. So I thank you very much for your work and for speaking with us today. Thanks, Arthur. And I want to thank the CRI and all the supporters of this research um, that we were able to do it. And I hope to come back in a few years with some updates on our research. Thank you.